had a number of requests from people on my forums to have a look at this, and I figured I'd do something a little bit different anyway. This distribution aims to be a plausible replacement for Windows XP. And of course, I'm speaking about Q4 OS. This is currently in beta. We're going to have a look at it right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. On first glance, this looks like Windows 98 Second Edition. But as we navigate through the system, you're going to see that it has more of an appearance of Windows 7 or Windows XP running in classic mode. The only alteration I made to this was I moved the panel from the bottom of the screen all the way up to the top, just as a matter of personal preference. If we look, hover over the time here, you're going to see that it'll open up a calendar where you can manage all of your appointments. You also have a volume control, a clipboard manager, and this is a K-Rander tray. And K-Rander lets you change your screen resolutions. And then of course, like Windows XP and Windows 7, there's that little arrow to hide all those uh, unused uh, or, you know, icons in the uh, task manager, in the task center here. And in this case, this gives you uh, the ability to change your language profile. And then, of course, a standard start menu. Not much is included on this. This is a nice, lightweight system for you to build on top of. When I downloaded this distro, it was only 330 megs in file size. So very small, small enough to fit on a CD, and then you can uh, burn it and then install it on that old computer. Because I know a lot of computers that did ship with Windows XP, a lot of those didn't ship with a DVD player. So this is great if you have a reader-writer uh, CD slot because I know most of them ship with uh, writable CDs and you would be able to use that to burn the image and then install it. Interestingly enough when I installed this in VirtualBox a wizard popped up asking me if I wanted to install the guest editions and uh, that really surprised me because I've never seen a Linux distribution do this before. This is based on a Debian GNU Linux under accessories, there's not a whole lot here. Nice and lightweight, small enough for you to build on top of. In graphics, just a font viewer comes preloaded with this. You get a web browser, which is Conqueror. It gives you the experience similar to Microsoft Internet Explorer. And the first time you launch it, it will give you the option to install Google Chrome. And that's something that they recommend. I'll show you that in a little bit here. You also get a wireless LAN manager, and then of course you can manage your network folders. Multimedia, just a simple mixer control is included with this. In settings, you can configure your panel, your desktop, a settings wizard, menu editor, menu updating tool, printers, and your wireless network. Under system, there are a few super user utilities here, such as using the file manager as root, and of course, uh, using the terminal as super user, and it'll ask you for your pseudo password. You get HTOP, which is a, a terminal-based uh, process viewer. I already mentioned the KRander Tray SysGuard, which is a graphical user interface performance monitor, KUser, uh, wireless LAN manager, console Crusader, which is a root mode file manager, and then Midnight Commander. And then, of course, in utilities, a few other things, KPager, which will allow you to navigate between the different desktops. Uh, K-Tip and Clipper. You get K-Write and Kate for editing text. You have two utilities, K-Job Viewer and K-Print Fax for managing print, and then Crusader File Manager, Midnight Commander. Then, of course, a few items thrown in lost and found, uh, the console and the web browser. Find files and folders, help, home, readme files, nothing in games yet, nothing in startup. Let's go ahead and have a look at the web browser here because there's a few things you're going to want to do with this distribution upon first launching. And apparently it didn't give me, uh, you didn't ask me if I wanted to install Google Chrome upon launching this, but in prior tests it allowed me to do so. But there are a few things you're going to need to do. And because if you were, if you're an experienced Linux user and you wanted to install the Synaptic Package Manager, for instance, 
it's going to give you problems uh, because when this installs it only allows you to set up a user and it doesn't give you the option for setting up a root password but this is considered beta software and that functionality may or may not be added later on so if you're going to want to do some things on their on its home page it takes you to the q4os.org website where you can download these little applications and then run them and they will install the applications that you need so in our in our case one thing we're going to want to do is probably give this a windows xp look so we can download the look switcher and we can just go ahead and save that as in unto documents that's fine okay that's downloaded why not get deb apps as well this will allow us to install applications from the debian repositories so i'm going to click on that and then uh, click that esh file that it wants to download and we'll go ahead and save that as well and of course there are some other options if you want a google chrome uh, you could install that and these are these esh files <laughs> i gotta show you this this is too cool uh, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this here, and then let's go open up my documents. And you're going to see that this has a Windows look and feel r right away. I mean, this looks like I'm working on Windows, which I thought is really cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up Deb Apps. And here it is. You have this wizard, and it looks like it, it just has that really cool air of familiarity, just like you're running Windows. Okay, everything passed, we press next, we'll put in our pseudo password. And then it'll download everything it needs and it'll compile these packages for you. While this is installing, because this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would, we can right click on the desktop here and then go into configure desktop. And you're gonna see this also has a really neat Windows-like look and feel. So you can manage your background here you can select no picture or you can select a number of pictures and they've included quite a number of them. You can assign the behavior of your desktop. Okay, it looks like this finished finally. You can go into general, your file icons, device icons. You can manage multiple desktops, decide how many of them you want. Okay, and then you can choose to mouse wheel over desktop background to switch desktop. Especially since we don't have a desktop pager on the panel presently, but I imagine we could add one later if we wanted to. A bunch of really cool screensavers come with this from OpenGL to, you know, banners and uh, pictures, you know, flying things. So they've included a number of them to give this the kind of look and feel that you may be after. And then, of course, you can manage your display settings as we did here and a power control. All right, let's go ahead and set up this look switcher because we're going to give this more of a Windows XP look. Let's go ahead and have a look at our control panel now so that we can uh, see some of the things that we've got added here. All right, so now um, we can go into settings and control panel here. And there are a number of things that you can set up on this. You can set up your appearance and themes. We already set up the background, but let's say you want to change the colors a little bit to give it more of a look that you want. And this interface will allow you to do that here. You can easily scroll through the different ones that are available. Let's see if I can find one that will match uh, the wallpaper that I've chosen. I think the Keramic White might do that very well. Okay, and I noticed with this that it requires you to log out and log back in for the, for the changes to take effect, which is something I don't believe I've seen in KDE. But this is the Trinity desktop, which is a fork of a KDE. Now also, let's have a look here, and there's now an option for installing applications. And the new listing appeared here under Debian Applications Deb Apps. Okay, you have a menu here which will take you to the top items that can be installed such as the chromium browser gimp paint ice dove mail ice weasel these two items are unbranded uh, mozilla products uh, firefox and unbranded thunderbird libreoffice pinta paint play on linux great if those of you want to get your windows applications running play on linux will help you to do that and then of course vlc media player can be installed through here as well but also you can go into your menu here 
and under Debian applications you can run the Synaptic Package Manager. We'll ask for your sudo password and then you can launch that here and then pretty much you can install anything from the Debian repositories. Something I want to note though before actually downloading this file off of the Q4OS website, I just decided to open a terminal and install Synaptic Package Manager myself. When I did that, I couldn't ever get it to launch. I don't know why that is. But installing the package that they recommended from the Q4OS website got me up and running the way I wanted to. But that is to be expected because this is beta software. All right, let's go ahead and have a look now at the look switcher. Under appearance and themes here, we're gonna go click on the look switcher and then we'll ask you if you wanna switch now. Okay, we'll do that. It will require us to end this session. All right, so let's go ahead and log back into our session. And now you're going to see we have a completely different look and feel here. Let's go ahead and open up something like my documents, for instance. All right, and now you're going to see that we have sort of a Windows XP kind of look going on here. Looks quite nice, actually. Maybe change some things around here. And it looks like we've got a bunch of different uh, wallpapers that are included in the... Uh, Oh, that one looks kind of cool. Let's apply that. So it looks like we've got some different appearances going on here. I really like how this panel looks as well. Uh, it's, so it's semi-transparent. And there is, of course, some transparency incorporated into the theme for this. This looks quite cool, actually. And it looks like we're going to have to reset up the number of desktops that we want to use and that sort of thing. I suppose the only thing that I can think of that would really make this look and feel like Windows XP is if we had a side panel, which this doesn't have, but that's okay because personally I don't even use a side panel in my uh, Linux desktop. But uh, for those of you who asked for this, thanks for suggesting, and I'm glad I had an opportunity to look at this. This is a step in the right direction for Q4 OS. I can't wait to see what the final version of this is going to look like. Uh, I'm not sure how long this has been under development, but it does look like this could be a good contender uh, for uh, your desktop where Windows XP is concerned. Let's have a look and see what kind of kernel you get with this. If I'm not mistaken, it's 3.2. Uh, yes, this is running 3.2. So this is a older kernel that this has. And uh, let's see if we can just open up Synaptic and just tell it to run a complete update on this thing. Let's go ahead and just tell it to mark all upgrades. The apply button does not come on, so it doesn't look like we have any uh, upgrades there. Maybe we could do that from a terminal. Okay, and it is, looks like it is pulling off of Wheezy. I was reading somewhere that this was uh, based on Jesse. Now, apparently it isn't. Okay, and it doesn't look like there are any upgrades or anything just yet. So, all in all, looks pretty good. Step in the right direction. Download it. It's small enough in file size. Slap it in a virtual box. Give it a try and let me know what you think of it. As a reminder, please consider supporting the show hosts who are bringing you the content you enjoy the most by disabling your ad blockers or shouting some coins. Peace out. Mm -hmm.